So now we're going to talk about uh, local domains. And you can see here, um, this server allows you to service uh, multiple domains. Uh, what I mean by service, service means uh, accept email for the users of this domain. So let's say if you register the domain uh, called domain.com, this is just an example, uh, you can have all the emails for that domain come to this server and then users on this domain that you specify here will be able to download any email uh, from their email box. So the email boxes will be sitting on this server. Now, um, in order to add the domain, it's very simple. Uh, what this does is just, you know, click the add button, just say um, analtest1.com and it adds the domain. It adds it here and it adds it in the list. Now you should uh, also, you know, I, I should point out that domains, when they're added, the domain directory is created here, right? Each time you add a domain, let's see, if you remove it right now, see, disappears. So you should be able to um, add and remove domains very easily, but this is the only place where the save and undo do not work. See, it's even written in red here. Please keep in mind that on this panel, any changes you make have immediate effect. Save and restore buttons do not apply. So you cannot undo and you cannot save. It's done immediately. Now, when you add a domain, a domain can be added by clicking the add or insert button on the keyboard. You can edit a domain and you can remove a domain, obviously, from here. You cannot remove it from anywhere else. Now. When you add a domain and you want to edit it, the only thing, uh, the only options you, uh, you have here is availability of a domain. If the domain is not available, it's going to give a temporary error to uh, uh, anybody who sends email for this, uh, for the users of this domain. It will say uh, that domain is temporarily not available. Please uh, come back later. And you can take a whole domain offline if you need to for maintenance, for example, if you want to change something. Now. Each domain, uh, the server has an unlimited number of domains. You can create as many as you want because each domain is a directory basically on your disk. It's only limited by your disk space. Now, each domain may have unlimited number of users as well. So you can create as many users as you like inside the domain and also an unlimited number of mailing lists. So each user that you create uh, is going to have a separate directory here, let's say, um, this is the domain.com. It has user one, right? So let's say, let's say add, I don't know, user two, very creative name. <laughs> I add password. And this is added. See, it's going to appear here. This is an, a separate directory. It has user info, obviously, and that contains the password, the mailbox size, and the parameters for that user. Password is encrypted, obviously. Now, if you want to add, um, you know, users that only have ability to send or only have the ability to receive, you can regulate it here. You can change it here. Now, let's see one by one what this does. This is the username uh, that you specify. You can type it in and it changes the username of uh, this particular user. This is read-only field. This is full username. This is what you will actually use if you um, do authentication, like username and password. This is your username for username and password. You copy it. You cannot type. See, I, I cannot type here. Anything I type here is going to be automatically reflected here. So anything I type is going to be um, is going to go into this full username. Now, this permissions. Um, it's very simple. It allows this one allows the user to receive messages. You can receive messages, right? Sometimes if you just want this user to be able to authenticate and not receive an, uh, uh, messages, you can just disable it. And then the user can only authenticate and do nothing else. Now, can send messages, you can also enable or disable it if the user can send messages. Also, the user has a mailbox the size of the mailbox is determined here. This is the user's quota, individual user. So if you remember, um, 
you have three places where you have sizes, different sizes. I'm just going to remind you. In security, right, you have the maximal message size. I'm just uh, reminding you so you can keep it in mind because in some cases you will get an error saying uh, out of space and some and sometimes you don't even know why. So there are three places why it could be out of space. This is one, the maximal message size. Your message that you're sending could be bigger than this number. Then it's going to be rejected. Second place is the total queue size, right? This is this number, incoming message queue size, right? So. If you have so many messages in your queue that uh, it runs out of space, runs out of this number, then it's not going to accept any more messages. And on the individual level, each user has its own mailbox, and each mailbox has a finite number of bytes it can hold. So if a particular user, specifically for this user, goes over this number, then no more messages for that user will be accepted. And this is his password. It's like you type it once, you type it second time to verify it, and that's it. Click OK. That's all there is to users. Now we come to mailing list. Mailing lists um, are basically there for uh, sending one message to multiple people. Mailing list can have uh, uh, users from this server and not from this server. It doesn't matter. It can have, each mailing list has an uh, unlimited number of users, as many as you want. You can add them here. This is the mailing list. Now, the mailing list has a few parameters as well. Now, a mailing list can be of one of two types. It can be a forward list or a major domo list. The difference is um, when you send something to this list, you send it basically to an email, right? You have, um, list name let's say list one again very creative this is your full list name it's not editable it's again for your reference you can copy it to, to a mailing program and um, major domain list uh, it's one type it doesn't have a list owner nobody is a list owner so when you send something to this email to this list one at domain.com you send anything at all to this list right to this email uh, this message is going to be distributed to all the people who are on this list. You can add, uh, um, I don't know, email1 at gmail.com and then um, uh, email2 at gmail.com. I know it's very creative, but <laughs> bear with me. <laughs> so once you send the message to this email, the same message will be delivered to all of these. Now, the from address is going to be your from address. So anybody um, who sends, who knows this email, will be able to send an email to this to this address, and this uh, this uh, email will propagate to all of these emails automatically. And your from from address will be your own from address. Now, the second type of uh, mailing list is the forward list. The forward list does have an owner, right? And you can type. Uh, uh, you can type the um, uh, owner here, and it could be different from your from address. You can type uh, my list owner at domain.com. Again, it's not necessarily has to be uh, on the same domain. It can be on a different domain. Doesn't matter. So you type it here, and um, that's about it. it. It's also going to be sending once you send the email to this email. Once you send a message to this email, it's going to propagate the same message to all those emails here on the list. And also, uh, the from address will be this. And the reply address will be your from address. So anybody who gets this message will see that it's coming from uh, mylistowner at domain.com. And that's the only difference between the two.